It's high time we've had a conversation about stilettos. Stilettos are arguably some of the coolest cool factor knives that are out there, but they're also some of the most disappointing knives you can purchase. If you're anything like me, you probably bought your first one at a county fair or at some random knife shop or truck stop somewhere. You bought it, you were excited, and then the thing immediately fell apart. But I recently just had a really awesome experience in Maniago, Italy. We're doing a whole documentary on a bunch of knife makers there. And Maniago, Italy is actually where most proper Italian stilettos come from. And it was a bit of a revelation seeing the difference between like a $20 county fair stiletto and a proper Italian made stiletto. It really changed my mind about the whole category and I just had to bring you guys the information that I found out because I was so excited about finding a knife that I'd given up on before I was even an adult is actually pretty cool and pretty practical. <laughs> to best understand how we got to where we got with the entire stiletto ecosystem, it's really important to know where we came from. So like I said, we were in Maniago, we were doing some awesome stuff there. We were actually able to go to a proper traditional stiletto factory and the process that they use are the exact same process that introduced automatic knives, stiletto knives to the United States in the 1940s after World War II. So we had a bunch of GIs in Italy and they kept coming across these really interesting automatic knives, something they had never seen before. So they brought them back in mass and as a result, orders started going through the roof and everybody in the United States seemed like wanted to have an Italian made stiletto. And for a while it was just an amazing time for knives in general. There was a lot of rad knives coming out of the world at the end of World War II, but specifically it was a huge advancement in automatic knives and basically every kid in the United States wanted to have an automatic stiletto switchblade from Italy. Now, as a result, it became the image of a lot of bad boys. Uh, there's a really interesting article that was written called Toys That Kill. We're gonna be doing a whole thing on that. Basically, in the 1950s, the whole thing of importing automatic knives, shipping automatic knives, making automatic knives became a lot more litigious and a lot more complicated with the Switchblade Act. Now, it was during this time that there was a lull in the market when it came to Italy being able to provide automatic knives to the United States. And then, you know, late 70s and the 80s, enter the Chinese market making these knives and uh, really just kind of making poor copies of them. And this isn't a bad statement on China. You guys know China makes some amazing knives, but cheap automatic knives are not really their forte, <laughs> or at least not really the forte that works very well when it comes to the US market. So while we were in Italy, what we were able to learn is the difference between $120 traditionally made Italian stiletto and then like a $20 Chinese stiletto. So let's talk a little bit about the inexpensive version with a little bit of side-by-side -side comparison. In the $20 version, you're gonna get a very inexpensive plastic handle. Now this plastic handle here is meant to maybe look like a antler or stag, but really cheap, really plasticky. You have a really thin spring on the back. Essentially, the way that stilettos fire is just a big old leaf spring under pressure. So you have a really small leaf spring on the back, and then just generally like, I mean, you can tap on this thing and just kind of hear, just not the greatest quality of construction. Now, you know, I think fire is okay, it's a little tinny. Again, it's a $20 knife, so we really shouldn't expect too much. I think that's totally fair not to expect too much. And then it does have the traditional bolster lock, just like you would find on like a proper Italian stiletto. And then if you don't know the way that you lock these knives in your pocket, because obviously that's a really big prominent firing button, is you just push up the spacer, it goes between the button and the frame, and then it doesn't allow that button to fire. Now. All in all, again, for 20 bucks, not too bad. But the problem, for me at least, is my only experience with stiletto knives was this really cheap, inexpensive knife, and it just kept falling apart on me. And I was just like, you know what, stilettos suck. I'm not gonna carry them. I don't care how cool they look. They're just not worth my time. Now, let's take the $20 knife, and let's look at this handmade Italian version of it. So, like I said, we were in Maniago. We saw all this awesome stuff. So as soon as I got back to the States, I was like, okay, I've got to get myself an Italian stiletto. And I went a little crazy. I got a few because I wanted some in some different sizes. So I've got kind of the smaller size, similar to our, uh, our Chinese $20 one here. And uh, this thing fires like a rocket. And you know, it's that classic black style, very West Side Story, whatever the movie is that got you into like thinking about stiletto knives. And then I got some big boys because boy, first off, it looks big already. And this is proper stag here. It looks big already, but then when you fire this thing, 
It's really, really fun. <laughs> and every time I pull this thing out, people are always like, whoa, that's way bigger than I thought it was. And I was like, yeah, it's like all blade. It's pretty amazing. Looking at both these versions, which again, Italian made, you've got a really nice, big, thick leaf spring on the back of those. You've got really nice, tight construction. Because that spring is so thick, you're gonna get that really hard, really snappy firing. And then on top of all of that, because these are made not just in a factory to be pushed out as quickly as possible, but made by artisans who have been making these knives. The gentleman that owns the factory that we went to, I think he's been making these knives for almost 70 years. He was like 82 or 83, and he's been working in that factory since he was a kid. It was his father's factory before him. So you have these artisans with just a huge plethora of knowledge that were pumping out these knives basically during the heyday, making literally hundreds of thousands of them a year, bringing all of that knowledge to the process. Now, one thing that I learned that was really interesting to me that really sets apart kind of the, the Chinese made and the Italian made is in that tribal knowledge. So both of these knives are gonna be constructed in a very similar way. And that's a challenge with these traditionally constructed stiletto style knives because they're pinned the way that the springs have to work, the way that they have to engage with the blade lock up, the way that even the lock goes to lock the button lock all of this has to be hand fitted. So even this one that you're seeing here, somebody drove these pins by hand, somebody checked the tolerances by hand and you know did the best that they could. But the difference is somebody who works in a factory and does a job and somebody who's a craftsman and has a long history of doing something for the sake of doing it well. Watching the master that we worked with in Maniago put one of these together was absolutely amazing. Basically, the final fit and finish of these knives is an entirely hand-done process. And this master craftsman was sitting at a bench just checking all of these different tolerances, adjusting the spring just a little bit one way, adjusting a pin just the other way, and then firing it and listening to it, firing and listening to it, until he was finally happy with the throw that he felt, until he was finally happy with the snap that he felt, until he was finally happy with how the entire package fit together and operated. And it was just really cool to see such a traditional style of knife making being done to something that I think is kind of considered more of a modern style knife, especially when we're talking about switchblades or automatic knives in general. Okay, while we're talking about traditional knives, I have got to show you guys this new modern traditional Magna Cup blade G10 handles based on a custom Ken Onion design. This is the redemption and it's based on the dead man's hand. Now here's the really rad thing. It's got a crossbar lock. It's made in the United States by Hogue Knives for CRKT, which is super cool to see knives in their new premium lineup that are interesting and that I think a lot of us probably want to own. Like I said, it's based on a custom Ken Onion design that I don't know about you, but I definitely can't afford. This thing is super slick, super smooth, and it's based on boot knives. So very similar to automatic knives and stilettos, which became illegal later, boot knives and even Bowie knives or Bowie knives were made illegal in the old west because gamblers would use them primarily as weapons. So the Redemption is a sweet new knife. It is crossbar lock only to be able to open and close it. Again, Magna Cup blade, you guys should really check it out. Thank you CRKT for sending us one. We've been digging it. One thing that I never understood with the stiletto is exactly how it got such a cultural hold on all of us, especially back in the day. Now, obviously for us, it's easy in retrospect to say, well, it was used in all of the cool old gang movies or the toughest guys in modern movies always have a knife that looks like this. I want a polka. So that's really easy, but they didn't have that back then. There was a novelty factor of seeing a knife that nobody had ever seen before for sure, but there was also something else that I learned about the stiletto in Maniago that I had never thought about before and that is that the Italian stiletto was the first mass-produced one-handed knife. And if you think about it, every knife in the 40s was either a slip joint, a back lock, or a fixed blade. And of course, I'm talking in general strokes here. I'm sure that there are a couple really awesome customs or a couple really awesome examples of maybe an early style of liner lock or some other sort of one-handed lock. But basically what I'm getting at is every knife that folded was a two-handed knife regardless of who you were or what you were doing or where you were buying it. And these Italian stilettos, when they're done correctly, you can release the bolster lock, you can close the knife, right? But you have that spring there. So the knife's not gonna like clamp down on your hands and then you can go for a full close. So you have literally the first mass produced one handed opening and closing knife, which is just absolutely amazing. And actually makes a ton of sense 
as to how these got so popular because it wasn't just the novelty of the thing, but it was also the fact that you could sit and just play around with this knife sitting on the couch, just like all of us modern knife guys do. It's nice to see some knife culture that attaches us all to the same line. Now, when we were in Maniago, we were able to sit down with a stiletto collector who has over 500 stilettos. And I can tell you right now that the idea of a one-handed opening and closing knife is not the only thing that they were doing with Italian stilettos in Maniago. That's something we'll have to dive into later because it's a, it's a whole bucket of worms. It becomes pretty obvious why the Italian made stiletto is much more worth your money. And really, in terms of knife guy money, it's not that expensive at $120. Now, I did wanna talk about another interesting category that we bumped into just really quick, and that is these modern versions that we're finding. We actually went to go find like a cheap version of the stiletto to be able to have a comparison to show you guys and it was a bit of a struggle. And the reason is, is because we're seeing a lot more of these stiletto style knives. And what you get with this is basically, this is just a button release automatic knife and then a button release automatic knife. So no bolster release, no leaf spring, and this operates exactly like a Boker Kalashnikov or a, a Protec or whatever it may be. Now, obviously, this is a $20 knife, so it's not a Protec. And then you still have a low locking mechanism on the top here, so that will keep your automatic knife from firing in your pocket. And this is kind of an interesting idea, but the fact of the matter is it's screwed construction, it's coil spring driven, not leaf spring driven. And uh, the reality of it is, is for 20 bucks, eh, it's probably a, a decent little automatic knife, but definitely still misses the marks in a lot of regards when it comes to just that traditional stiletto style that, uh, like I said, I had just given up on. <laughs> so yeah, I just, uh, I had this epiphany it opened up an entire section of knives that I had completely given up on with that trip to Italy and seeing how these were constructed, understanding the format a little better, and then realizing that for, again, what for a lot of us is not that much knife money, you can get a really cool traditionally constructed stiletto knife that really kicked off a big portion of knife craze in the United States after World War II. So basically, I just wanted to share this with you guys because I was stoked about it. And I thought that you guys might be stoked as well because I learned a whole bunch. And I hope that you guys have learned something here too. We'll catch you on the next one.